and the day we got married, I knew I, I knew we were gonna get divorced. And he was amazing. He was a great provider. He was a good friend and things were good. I don't feel particularly inspired or satisfied. I had an affair. So anyway, we did a video the other day about a guy cheating and I don't know, I don't know cheating happens a lot nowadays, I would think. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure if it happens more nowadays than what it did what they call back in the day before the whole cell phones and Instagram and Facebook and all that other stuff. But I think that's one of the fears of a lot of people, especially a lot of men is that they're going to be cheated on. This is not the video that I guess you probably think it's going to be. Okay. Let me just say this. I believe in, I believe sometimes in a relationship, it can be both sided. And what I mean by that is that you can have someone that cheats, but you can also have that part partner that cheats, which is the guilty party of doing the physical act of cheating and sometimes emotional cheating. But you can also have the other side of the partner in the relationship that could not be giving the other partner, you know, everything they need. Now here's the thing. That's not always the case. I, I do understand that there's some people that just are going to cheat regardless or whatever. And some people, listen, that might be the majority of the people, but I do think in some relationships that there are some things that cause, you know, they have a higher percentage of causing cheating than other things. What do you think? I think you're right. That's all you got to say. You always say that. <laughs> I mean, because you, you just co-sign everything. I mean. Listen, she just co-signs everything. So it looks like I'm just hogging the conversation. And the only thing I get is like a check mark. It's like, you know. No, I agree. You're, I, I you're think yes that woman. a lot of people probably look for something that they're not getting in somebody else. I think a lot of times it's attention, just attention. And mm. I think it starts kind of maybe innocent, but then you're getting that attention from somebody and that's, that's attractive. Things were good until they weren't. When we got married, I was 320 pounds. I lost the weight and kind of went south. So that lady right there, I actually watched a video with her. She actually has a long, like 50 minute video, but she was talking about how she had a really good man, but she ended up cheating with her quote unquote work, well, husband. And so she ended up cheating with him. And to come to find out is that he also had a wife and kid, but she didn't know. So she ended up leaving her husband for him and didn't. And he didn't leave? No, he didn't leave. In 2019, I had an affair. And right before my dirty 30 of going to, with my girlfriends to Vegas that I planned for myself, um, one of my friends got mad at me and messaged my husband and told him everything. The first date was so nice, like a perfect gentleman. I was just like, yes, but then Dre, it just, over time, it never came around. Mm. Like that feeling never came around and so now we're in the swing of having sex, but it's detached. I don't feel particularly inspired or satisfied. It might not be speaking to what the lady just said, but I do feel that people chase this, I guess, euphoria or this dopamine, you know, hit of just that first, you know, interaction when you meet someone new and just that, just the high of, you know, the, the unknown and just kind of getting to know someone and, and you never know, kind of know what to expect. And I think that goes for both sides. I think that goes for the female side and I think that goes for the male side. But I also feel like women also, females also do like a bit of adventure and mystery. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes us guys, after we've been in a relationship for a little while is that we forget to provide that, you know, adventure, that mystery and stuff. We kind of get in that rut thing. And the thing is, is that, listen, women are as adventurous as men are. It's just that women don't tell men a lot of times how adventurous they are. Am I wrong on that? Nope, you're right. I'm right. And so I, I think, you know, as a guy, it's like, you always want your woman to, to look a certain way. As a guy, I think we also have to keep up that, you know, that adventurous spirit. And I guess, you know, int introducing your relationship to new things or your relationship gets stale and gets boring. And a female could have, you know, a reason to look for adventure somewhere else. We were in love, it was real. It was real to me. I, you know, I can't speak for him and this is why this is called my truth. Um, and marriage is something serious to me. It's not something that I played around with, so. Well, after finding out about my affair, he got me into psychotherapy and got us into a religious marriage counselor. Mm. Now, props to him for getting me into a psychotherapist because this man specialized in sexual trauma and he was really able to help me process some stuff I went through as a child. I think therapy is good, but, but I don't know. 
I, I kind of go up and down on some of the hmm, church therapy things sometimes. I think it's good for some people, but I don't think it's good for everyone. I think key is to find the right therapist. I think it is. And the thing is, is that it is very hard to find the right therapist yeah. because people think therapists are just cookie cutter and they're not. You have to find someone that, that I don't know. I don't even it's know almost how to like find. another relationship. You have to find somebody who you're compatible with and you feel comfortable with. With that still is that I almost feel like sometimes is that, you know, when you get into these religious things and I'm not talking about any certain religious, but they start putting boxes around you. I grew up in a religious household. And so the thing is, I do understand these boxes. And a lot of times these boxes needed for morals and different things like that. But I think some people take it to the extreme sometimes where it's all these things that you can't do. You can take a whole bunch of things away from a person but after a while it's like they're gonna get bored mm -hmm. they're gonna get, i mean if, if they're not okay with it they're gonna get bored and the thing is that you have to have you know two committed people to be in that you know type of religious you know sect. bring me to the day you cheated for the first time so uh met a guy at work and uh -oh. we started to become friends he was very flirtatious gave me a lot of attention i had just had a baby i was about a year postpartum mm. and I was feeling I mean the weight was gone but I was still feeling bad I was feeling bored and frumpy mm. and I just wanted some excitement and he and I became friends and it was innocent at first and then it gradually started to progress into something a little more inappropriate each day I was thinking she was gonna say it was innocent until it wasn't it's like nobody Nobody wants a car that they can leave the keys in and the windows down and nobody wants to steal it. Like everybody just walks by. It's like your car is that ugly and that bad that nobody wants to steal it. Mm -hmm. I think most most guys want a female that other guys look at them and say, wow, you got a nice looking female. But with that comes other guys looking at your female saying, wow, you got a nice looking female. The same way is that if you have a nice car, it's like other people give you compliments on your car and stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's damn if you do, damn if you don't. You have to be secure in your relationship, but you also have to be giving that person what they need also, because if you're not giving that person what they need and they're getting compliments from other people, then sometimes, you know, it's hard to kind of fight off those compliments and that attention if you're not giving the person that you're with the attention that they need. I mean, listen, you can have a nice car, but if you don't wash it, you don't clean it, you don't, you know, armor all the tires and stuff like that. It's like at some point in time, you know, you sell the car to somebody else and they do all this stuff. And then you look at it after you sold it. And it's like, man, that was a nice car. It's like, yeah, but you didn't take care of it. If you took care of it, it'd have been a nice car for you. Everyone wants, you know, this, you know, beautiful woman that everybody, you know, compliments you on. But with that, it, it comes a lot of maintenance with that sometimes. I'd be curious to know if anybody ever like ran the statistics of divorced couples of how many say like it was a good thing that we did separating or how many say they regret and if they would have just tried harder given it what it needed that they think that that ultimately was the best relationship for them because some people I do feel are better off divorced. You do hear some couples who get married multiple times. Well, I think that's a little strange. Yeah, but, yeah. I think what happens when you have couples sometimes that get married multiple, yeah, multiple times is that they get divorced and they go out here and it's like, oh, everybody's effed up out here. Yeah, there, there's <laughs> actually there's people re way more effed up than you are. So let me go back. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You find out the grass isn't greener on the other side of the fence. But the but the thing is, that I think some people have these hard boundaries on things that they can't get over. And when you have one person that has a hard boundary, but you have another person that doesn't, then I think that's something that's hard to to overcome for for both of them. So I think people do grow apart. It's, it takes years sometimes to really get to know somebody. I think uh, it takes years to get to know yourself, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the problem, too, is you think you know who you are. You think that you found somebody compatible, but then the years go on and you realize that's kind of not who you are. Or, you know, sometimes kids change people or hmm. you realize you have other likes and things you want to do. And the person that you're with isn't on the same page. And I mean, how, peop how many people are, are think the same or the same person that feel the same things and, and pursue the same things? as they were when they're 15 versus when they're 25. And how many people are the same person and pursue the same things and have the same things important in their life and, and you know, and the same passions at 35. I think what you run into sometimes is that you have to find somebody that you can grow with. What's that next word? Pickleball. Pickleball. As much as I hate pickleball, you gotta find somebody you can play pickleball with that you can hit the ball back and forth with. I think you have to find somebody that is willing to grow with you and willing to allow you 
to figure yourself out mm -hmm. and and vice versa you have to allow the other person to figure themselves out and sometimes they're figuring out can be difficult sometimes they're figuring out honestly can come with some cheating sometimes because i think you don't realize what you actually have until you have something different sometimes and sometimes that's what some people take to understand is like you know what i don't like this i don't want this it's like what i have is actually good what i have and maybe i need to work on what i have currently i've always been friends with his friends um or not friends friends but i befriended his friends um we had good conversation we so i was connected to some of his friends it was one of his friends that i connected with he was coming into atlanta he had just came off deployment so we met up and I was trying to hook him up with one of my friends. Okay, before we even go on this, what do you think about that? What you say? Yikes. <laughs> what have I said before is that I don't become friends with the mm -hmm. my friends, girls. Yeah. There's already that kind of boundary that's been crossed already. It's more casual to begin with anyway. You see what I'm saying? Because you already have a mutual connection. Yeah, and yeah, mutual topic. I'm sure they're talking yeah. about that poor guy. Yeah. I mean, in her defense, they did get married and then he was deployed pretty much right after. So they didn't get to have a lot of conversations. So maybe they just hadn't gotten to the one yet about guy code. I mean, listen, I mean, guy code would have been established way before that. Like, <laughs> if, if you're going to communicate with someone, you're going to communicate with my best friend's friend, wife. Like, yeah, that's that's your communication. Well, he should have had that female. conversation with his friends too. <laughs> and and if all my friends are single, you don't know them. You don't really want the suspicion. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're if you're not in the state that you're traveling. You know what I'm saying? But after finding out about my affair, he became very controlling. So while I was going to therapy, I basically had to come home and report back to him mm. everything that I had talked about or processed through. Mm -hmm. um, so I had no privacy had access to all my social medias. I actually had to delete my social media um, for six months. And Poor thing. And when I got back on, I had to delete like half of my following and friends and then he had my login. So for some reason, if someone messaged me, it would go first to his phone. I was completely isolated. See, I don't know about that. When you when it comes down to where you start taking stuff away from people like they're a kid, you know what I'm saying? It's like, listen, if you were having to take something away from somebody versus them actively wanting to give it up, I think that's, I mean, I think you're setting yourself up just that. because you're actually taking something that they want away versus them saying, it's like, you know what? I really don't need this. I, I don't need this because this, you are more important than this that I have. I don't know. That's just my feeling about it. I could be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> To be honest, I don't know. I don't like to hear that she's being controlled, but I mean, I don't, I don't know their relationship. I mean, she seemed like she had no control of her own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. It's but true. I don't know that that would make her like she's going to therapy to try to get better and mm -hmm. to try to, you know, I guess stay in her marriage. And I feel like that might backfire. I don't know. Like when you marry somebody, you have to let them be who they are you can't try to change them i mean you might like them a certain way and maybe you bend them a little bit but i mean trying to completely change somebody or to control them i don't know that that ever would last long term it's like one of these things when you're trying to plug a hole the leak's gonna come out somewhere else you start changing people they change not only it's it's possible that they're not going to change in more ways than the way that you're trying to change them. And then, I mean, then it's almost to the point where they could be, you know, not the person that you fell in love with anymore. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. Because you might've fell in love with that wild side, but you really know what that wild side consisted of until it actually kind of popped up on you. But I gave up those freedoms because I had messed up. Mm. And you have to realize that I didn't just, betray him. I betrayed my own morals. Mm -hmm. I had never even cheated on a boyfriend before. So I was processing a lot in this and I felt extremely guilty. And I tried to not feel ashamed because I know shame puts you in a spiral and I was okay. trying to just feel guilty so I could change my ways and process and make sure it never happened again. You know, everybody's different. So maybe that's what she needed. Some people have been sheltered so much that they've never actually had a chance to be, you know, quote unquote, you know, wild to figure out is like, you know what, that might not be the best thing for me in my life. <laughs> but seeing how he is now, I mean, maybe that's, maybe he had tendencies like that before she went on her little 
<laughs> Round spree. The yeah, and yeah. maybe that's maybe that's what pushed her to do something. There's always you know, two sides. A little bit of freedom. Yeah, there's always two sides of the story. The thing is that when you hear like the the person that cheated side of the story, you never hear the other side of the story of, you know, of the other spouse right. or the other mate of. There's always what three was, sides actually. What is it? What is this? His this? side, her side, and the truth. Yeah, but the truth never comes out, so the truth doesn't have a side. The <laughs> truth can never talk. Well, it was exciting because it was a secret. Mm -hmm. But when I came home, I was just, I loathed coming home. I did not want to come home. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be in that excitement, that euphoria forever. Mm -hmm. I hated coming home. Mm -hmm. um, so it was hard. I lived a double life. I was a different person at work and with him. And I was a different person at home with my baby and with my ex-husband. I don't need to delve much more into that because there's a whole bunch of stuff we can delve into that. But relationships are not easy. Relationships can are actually very difficult because you have physical needs and you have emotional needs. And then you have everything else that surrounds that about the outside world. I think one of the things that, you know, a lot of people have a difficult time with is communicating. And communicating some of those things that, you know... Can, I know, can be uneasy sometimes. Do you think cheating can always be the end of a, rela a relationship? No. Can it be sometimes? Yes. Should it be sometimes? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some people are just not meant to be in a relationship. Right. And I think sometimes <laughs> when it maybe shouldn't be, it is. Because unfortunately, just there's maybe just one of the parties just can't. Can't get past it. Not everybody should be in a relationship. And if you find yourself in a relationship with a person that's not meant to or supposed to be a relationship, at some point, at some point in time, you just got to, you know, what is that thing? Let it go. What's that? But wait a second. I also think, though, you know, some people, if they get cheated on, then they, they're either miserable or they're just, they're worried all the time. And they don't, you know, it's almost like they make their spouse pay for what they did yeah. punish them yeah. or they worry all the time and they're just miserable but mm -hmm. that's also that's people make mistakes mm -hmm. and i'm not saying it's okay mm -hmm. but it's not okay to be in a relationship where you're miserable or you're worried all the time why would you want to be with that person anyway like it's something you just let them go but I mean, at the end of the day, people are people. And the thing is, no matter how much you worry or how much you do stuff, I mean, a person is a person. They're going to do what they want to do. And the thing is that with you worrying about it and stressing yourself out about it, it even if you do that, I mean, if they really want to do it, they're going to do it anyway. Yeah, so what, what is that thing called? Free will? Is that what it's called? And so if a person has free will, then you can't really honestly control them unless you lock them up. One of the biggest things guys go through, one of the biggest things guys are afraid of, because our egos are very fragile, is that it's being cheated. Because the thing is that as a guy, you think that you are supposed to be, you know, the king of your household. You're supposed to be in dominion of everything around you. And as soon as that is, you know, tested and and you feel like, you know, you're less than. And the thing is that I think one of the biggest things that guys, one of the biggest fears guys have is being cheated. On. And the thing is that is a real fear, but you know at the same time it's like why are you gonna worry about it all the time? If you have somebody that that actively wants to do that and you're actually actively trying to provide them everything that they need emotionally, you know, physically, and then also like I said, you have to not have a boring relationship. Your relationship cannot be boring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People die from boredom, and so I mean if you're providing all that and it's still not a good enough, then at some point in time you gotta let that person go. That person not meant for you because that person gonna end up pulling you down, right. and so at the end of the day, I don't know. I uh, think uh, I think there's two sides of cheating. I think you know we watched a video with a guy that cheated yesterday. I watched a video with a woman that women that were cheating today. Hey, cheating is running rapid out here. Y'all need to keep it in y'all's pants. No, you need to groom your relationships. You need to water them, tend to them. Yeah, that, that whole word. Those grooming. are the attractive girls that are out there, the ones that are being taken care of. And those are the guys that are attractive out there, it's the guys that are happy. Mm -hmm. They're being taken care of. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. There's some ratchetness running around. It actually looks looks okay sometimes until until it turns on you. <laughs> <laughs> Never let ratchetness in your house. <laughs> Jumps on your couches, pees on your floor. It's just... Yeah, that's what ratchetness does. <laughs>